Shalom. I want to start off by saying Kal Halal Yamla, Yahweh, Basham, Yahushai, Basham, Rika, Kodash. Double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone for teaching us the truth and who rule well. Peace and citations unto the Akim that is spread around the four corners of the earth, spreading this word in sincerity and the truth. Shalom to the hopeful elect of the brother Kotas of Zion. Coming back through the spirit and power of Yahweh, Basham, Yahushai, with another lesson, with another video, and Lord willing, this video is edifying. In this video, I want to go into Isaiah. Isaiah 14, verse 7, and verse 8. And it reads, The whole earth is at rest and is quiet. They break forth in, in singing. Gone. So this is speaking about how when the, the wicked rulers are being taken out of authority that they that the earth is going to be in balance again the earth is going to be happy the people are going to be happy you know because who is that ruler that is ruling this place in in uh wickedness right now that's esau man the so-called white man that's his biblical name esau the edomites and once the rightful rulers are being put in their place, which are the so-called blacks, Latinos, and Native Americans, which they are the children of Israel, you know, the 12 tribes of Israel, when they are going to be put in authority, then the whole earth is going to rejoice. Like it says in the book of Proverbs, Proverbs 29, verse 2. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked bear rule, the people mourn. And the earth is mourning right now. The people are mourning. Everything is out of, out of balance, out of place. You see? The earth is, hoard, is hoarding. Even the earth, you know, you can... You, the earth can't speak. But you feel the groanings of the earth. You know, earthquakes in diverse places... You have uh, tsunamis and earthquakes and, and, and floodings, you know. For we know that Esau, the so-called white man, he has this technology where he does geoengineering. But it's not supposed to be like that, man. The, 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 the balance of the earth is disrupted right now. Let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 24, verse 4. And it reads, The earth mourneth and faded away. The world languished and faded away. The haughty people of the earth do language. The earth also is defiled under the inhabitants thereof, because they have transgressed the laws, changed the ordinance, broken the everlasting covenant. Gone. Because we have been given certain laws that we should keep to keep the land in balance to keep the land sabbaths you know to to not deplete the earth to deplete the the place that we're living you know because it's supposed to be uh the earth is a living organism and we are supposed to live in symbiosis with it you know not leeching only off off of it no man you should you should um, keep the earth healthy also you see So let's go to Isaiah again. Oh, wait a second. Let me go to this scripture. Mm. Yeah, let me start at 55. This is Second Ezra 6, verse 55. All this have I spoken before thee, O Yahweh, because thou madest the world for our sakes. You see, this is Ezra speaking 
And who is Ezra? Ezra is a Hebrew Israelite. You know, he comes from one of the twelve, um, one of the twelve tribes of Israel. So he's one of the sons of Israel. You know, his, uh, he's one of the seed of the twelve tribe of Israel. And what he is saying here is that the world was created for our sakes. We were the rightful rulers. We are the rightful ruler rulers that are going to come back in rulership. You know. Verse 56, as for the other people which also come of Adam, thou hast said that they are nothing, but be like unto spittle, and hast likened the abundance of them unto a drop that falleth from a vessel. You see? So these other people that also come from Adam, they are like nothing. They are just props, you know, in our movie. In the movie of Yahweh Basham Yahushai, where the Israelites, they are the main the, the the main role, you know, starting with Yahweh Shai and King David and the Twelve, then the rest of Israel, you know, they are the main characters. But the rest are like a drop of a vessel, man, these other nations. Verse 57, And now, O Yahweh, behold, these heathen, which have ever been reputed as nothing, have begun to be lords over us and to devour us. And that's in that situation that we're in right now. You know, all the nations on the on the earth, they have ruled over us. We have been perpetual save, slaves continually, you know. There was um, parts where we would come in power, but then the heathens would, would take it over again, you know. And only under the reign of King Solomon we, we reigned for 40 years, you know, but that, uh, that's the only time that we were in power for that long, you know, but now when the kingdom of heaven is going to be established, then we are going to be in rulership forever and ever, you know, then everything is going to be in balance because the most highest laws are going to be put in place and they are going to be not going to be transgressed. They're going to be followed to the T. You know, so everything is going to flourish. And the people are going to be happy. The people are going to rejoice. They're not going to be mourning and then being in languishing. You know, they're not going to be sorrowful like how people are now in a poorer state. How they're sorrowful. How everything is turned upside down. How the so-called white man is pushing his philosophies, his image down people's throat. You know, Second Ezra 6, verse 58. But we, thy people, whom thou hast called thy firstborn, thy only begotten, and thy fervent lover, are given into their hands. If the world now be made for our sakes, why do we not possess an inheritance with the world? How long shall this endure? God. So Ezra, he was, you know, he was showing, asking the Most High, how long this is going to uh, keep on happening to us, you know, since we have been called the firstborn, since we have been called the fervent lover and, and joined unto the Most High. We are the, the nation that is most close to the Most High. So when is this all going to stop? So he was pleading his cause, just like all the other prophets before him. You know, that's what the prophets do. They want the kingdom of heaven. They want uh, to see their people doing good calling on the name of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, and that Yahweh Hashem Yahushai uh, redeems his people, that he saves his people. You know, even now, that's what we are pleading for. That's why we are crying to the Most High day in and day out. You know, that this, this wicked man, Esau, can be taken out of rulership, and that our kingdom, the kingdom of Yahweh Hashem Yahushai, can be, be established here upon earth, so that everything is going to flourish again. You see? So this is Isaiah 14, verse 8. Yea, the fir trees rejoice at thee, and the cedars of Lebanon, saying, Since thou art laid down, no feller is come up against us. Gone. So this is double fold, because it's speaking about literal trees, and it's also spiritually speaking about how trees are meant. 
So I'm going to go into the, into the second part first, that the trees are being referred as men, you know. The fir trees rejoice at thee and the cedars of Lebanon, because why are men seen as trees? Let's go to Psalms. Psalms 1, verse 2 and 3. But his delight is in the law of the Lord, and his law doth he meditate day and night. And he shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. The man is seen as a tree, and the rivers of water is the truth that brought that bringeth forth his fruit in his season. His leaf, his leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he doeth shall prosper. Come on, so the Most High is going to be with him, so he's going to prosper in what he's doing. Let me see. Let's go to the book of Judges. Judges nine. This is Judges 9, verse 8. The trees went forth on a time to anoint the king over them. And they said unto the olive tree, Reign thou over us. But the olive tree said unto them, Should I leave my fatness, wherewith by me they honor the most high and men, and go to be promoted over the trees? And the trees said to the fig tree, Come thou and reign over us. So you can read on, and it's still speaking about trees and about the fig tree, you know, and the olive tree. So basically, what this is speaking about is that the sons of Gideon, you know, they wanted to have a king over them. So that's why they were seen as trees. That's why it says the trees went forth on a time to anoint a king over them. So how do trees walk? How do trees talk? You know, saying that uh, the olive tree should reign over us. No, man, this is speaking about men. So this is, uh, how do you call it? A similitude, you know, it's a parable where the men are being seen as trees. Basically, you can also you know, go to this. If you walk, if you climb a, a set of stairs, this is Mark 8, verse daily, a little bit, he took took one step at a time, by the hand, you know, and led him out of the town in the end. And when he spat on his eyes reach and put you his hands upon him, he asked him if he saw, but if you if he skip saw aught, days and steps. Verse and, and, and try he looked to up and said, hop over men from as trees one stair walking. to the other. So this is Yahweh Shai. You are going to need more effort. Man. You know, you see? But and if you use a constant see, and steady effort, if you have a walking, certain regiment, uh, so uh, not yeah. always when it speaks about trees, it speaks regiment. about literal trees. This is where I was also looking for. If you have a certain regiment, you know, if you have a certain schedule being seen as study and how you teach and what you do, then... In the end of the going day, back, then you're going to look back 14, like, hey, first, whoa, I really did a eight, lot. You know, eight, the fir trees rejoice at the and the setters of Lebanon. If you so take days these, off, the fir trees are men. You are and going the to setters have of to Lebanon. But those even are more the effort elect men to come Why? into that place because that you want to be. The setters of Lebanon, they were used to build the, the temple when King Solomon was reigning. And what are we doing right now? Now we also are building a temple, but this time we're building a spiritual temple. So these setters of Lebanon, those um, represent the elect men of the nation of Israel. Since thou art laid down, no feller is come up against us. And the thou, the thou is speaking about Esau. Since Esau has been put down, no feller has come up against him. You see, so this, that's the part where it's speaking about um, men, the spiritual sense. And now we're going to go into the literal sense where it speaks about trees. So that's why it's double fold. If you go into that word, filler, 
<clears throat> Feller means to cut down. The outline of a usage says cut down, eliminate, cut down, to hew. And that word is karat in the Lashawan Kwadash. So you know that Esau, especially when it's uh, the time of December, he likes to bring out the fir tree, which is the, the, the so-called Christmas tree, you know, that they use for celebrating Christmas, the fir tree. So they are planting that tree all over the place, you know, so that at the time when uh, December comes up, that they would have enough of these trees to do their their um, sacrifices and to do their witchcraft with, you know, because this is actually a ritual that they're letting everybody on the earth, or mostly the western part of the earth, they are taking, they are taking, uh, um, <clears throat> they are partaking in that ritual that Esau put up, you know, in the Christmas uh, celebrations, you see? So let me just also go to Jeremiah 10, because that's the scripture which speaks about that. This is Jeremiah 10, verse Jeremiah 10, verse 2. Thus said Yahweh, Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed as the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cut a tree out of the forest, the works of the hands of the workmen with the axe, they deck it with silver and with gold, they fasten it with nails and with hammers, that it move not. You see? So that's the whole ritual that is being described here in the Bible that we should not be partakers of, you see? But Esau, he does this. He brooms these trees, especially for that purpose, so for that ritual where he's letting everybody uh, solemnly take part of, you know, under the banner that it's uh, a Christmas spirit and, and stuff like that, you see? But what does the scripture say? Deuteronomy... 20. Verse 19 and 20, it says, When thou shalt besiege a city a long time in making war against it to take it, thou shalt not destroy the trees thereof by forcing an axe against them, for thou mayest eat of them, and thou shalt not cut them down, for the tree of the field is man's life to employ them in the siege you see so the trees are very important you shouldn't just cut up cut off trees because you you've uh, taken a, a city captive or that you want to build a, a bigger city no man you should carefully take thought of which trees you cut down because these trees are given for life you know like we know in the Amazon, you know, Esau is cutting down trees like crazy. And what do they say about the Amazon? Amazons are the lungs of the earth, you know. The uh, trees, they take up our carbon uh, dioxide. You know, they take up the thing that we breathe out and they give us oxygen in, 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 in uh, return, you know. So... They give, they sustain our life, trees, you see? And also, you have many uh, medicinal purposes for trees. So, the scripture says, don't cut down the trees because the trees are man's life, you know? Verse 20, only the trees which thou knowest that they be not trees for meat, Thou shalt destroy and cut them down, and thou shalt build bulwarks against the city that make it war with thee until it be subdued. You see? 
so only the ones that you know that are not useful for meat for fruit for medicine for for um you know to to sustain life those ones you can hew down and make uh, bulwarks you know to defend the city let's go to another one another reason why you shouldn't just cut down trees like a madman like Esau is doing because also if you look at these some of these um, what do you call it some of these commercials after they've been into the forest and cut everything down sometimes you see a monkey or a a leopard or some animal stuck in the mud and there's no trees for miles. Why? Because that tree was his home. You know? This is Psalms 104 verse 16. The trees of the Lord are full of sap, the setters of Lebanon, which he had planted. Where the birds make their nest, as for the stork, the fir trees are their house. You see? So these trees are houses for animals. And if you cut that down, you are sentencing these these animals to death or you're um, forcing them to migrate in places that they shouldn't really be you know and that's what esau shows you in his commercials you know with sad music and these animals uh, almost uh, starving to death and then they ask you to send money to help these animals in the meantime he is the ones that causing this He's the one that's causing these animals to die out, you know, destroying their natural habitat. Yeah, man, let's go to Isaiah. Isaiah 55. Verse 12 and 13. For ye shall go out with joy and be led forth with peace. The mountains and the hills shall break forth before you into singing, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up fir tree, and instead of briars shall come up the myrtle tree, and it shall be to the Lord for a name and for an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. Gone. So the earth is going to be blessed again. The earth is going to be happy and rejoicing when the righteous rulers are going to be in authority. Because remember, just like how in the time of the Garden of Eden, you know, we didn't have to work the ground and plow the ground for things to grow, for everything to flourish. But since Adam had gotten cursed when he left, you know, left uh, the Garden of Eden, he had to, by the sweat of his brows, you know, he had to plow the ground to get meat out of the ground, to get food out of the ground, to till the ground, to get, you know, the the nutrition and the the, the greens and, and everything, vegetables that he needed to sustain himself. So just like how Adam was cursed back then, you know, that he had to uh, plow the ground now. The earth is going to yield its fruits and everything is going to be make beautiful again, man. Let's go to the last scripture, which is in Baruch 5, and verse 7 and 8. And it reads, For Yahweh, by Shai, had appointed that every high hill and banks of long continuance should be cast down and valleys filled up to make even the ground that Israel may go safely in the glory of the Most High. Moreover, even the woods and every sweet-smelling tree shall overshadow Israel by the commandment of Yahweh Bashem You see? So, the, the, everything was created to be in a perfect balance so that Israel may go safely in the glory of the Most High. So these mountains and hills, they were supposed to be green. 
the ones that you see in uh, or let me say if you go to the pictures of israel right now it's see it, it, it it's desolate you know it's a desert it's not beautiful but when the children of israel are going to be put in that land by the hand of the most high everything is going to flourish again all the mountains and hills they're going to be green again you're going to have trees sweet smelling trees you're going to have um, the woods is going to be beautiful you know but now it's all desolate why because a bastard is in ashdod right now you know the the amalekites which is the chief the chief tribe of esau the so-called white man is in that land right now doing all kind of madness all kinds of folly all kinds of abominable things so the the, the land is not in in the state that it should be but when the sons of israel they are going to be put in that land everything is going to be right side up again everything is going to be beautified again you see so when the righteous are in authority the people and the earth is going to rejoice you see so yeah man with that i hope this video is edifying and i want to say kal halal yamla yahweh ba sham yahushai ba sham rakah kodash shalom akim